morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Morning Heart Devotion. Let's start out the day by offering a greeting, a bow to our heavenly parents and true parents. And now to lead us through the family pledge, I'd like to invite up Reverend Milhan Stevens. 가정맹세 1. 자녀국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 번향 땅을 찾아 번연의 창조의 상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 창건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 2. 자녀국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천주의 대표적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에서는 효자, 국계에서는 중심, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 3. 자녀국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 4대 신정권과 3대 왕권과 황족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 천여국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조의 상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 5. 천여국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상세계와 대상적 지상세계의 통일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님의 태신 가정으로서 천운을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 번연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 심정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 자녀국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 자녀국 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국에 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Thank you very much, Reverend Melhan Stevens. And now to open us up in prayer, I'd like to invite up Bill Stoner. Bill Stoner. Please join me in prayer. Our dearest, beloved Heavenly Parent, Hananim is with a deepest sense of appreciation and gratitude that we, your children, come before you on this Parents' Day, Sunday, July 25th, 2021, to just reassure you, Heavenly Parent, that we are giving up our lives totally from the lives we came from. As we have come from lineages that were children of Satan, we come before you, dear God, to proclaim that your love, your life, and your lineage is everything that we could ever possibly want. And we are eternally, eternally, absolutely, completely grateful to you that you have extended such grace that we could have our lives given back to us. You are precious and our beloved true parents. And now through the grace of Dr. Yong, who is guiding us to a deeper understanding of the precious words and the deepest beautiful heart that our true parents have always been desperate to give us. But we who were so immature were unable to grasp, to digest and to put into practice. Please be with us that on this day, we may grow to have such realms of heart 
in which we can give such love to you that we can liberate your heart and we can reassure you that we will always be with you and that we will capture, win, move and inspire the hearts of all of mankind that we can all come back to you and that we can enjoy the rest of eternity being your true sons and your true daughters. I don't thank you, dear God, for the so much love that you give. We come before you and ask that you join with us on this prayer service. And please speak to Dr. Yong that today we can grow ever more. Thank you, Hananam. Abba Jeter God, this I offer in the name of Bill and Mary Stoner, the blessed Stoner family. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Bill Stoner. Your prayer is such a filial prayer. Wow, really amazing. Thank you so much, Bill Stoner. God bless you. Thank you for your prayer, Uncle Bill. And now, brothers and sisters, let us begin the day in joy by sharing our gratitude points with each other. If you're by yourself, please take this moment to reflect on what you're grateful for this morning. We'll see each other in a few minutes.
<laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful sort of heartfelt sharing with each other. Um, now I'd like to invite up Don Kuahara, Don Kuahara, to share with us his gratitude points this morning. Hi, uh, everybody. Good morning. Uh, yes, my gratitude point. Well, we have some conversation in our breakout rooms, and the one brother said, wow, the reading, listening to mother's uh, memoir, and especially in the 1970s, breast wives went out for three years. Yes, it's a lot of sacrifice. And... I said, yes, but you can think of it from 1960 and 21. It's a small starting point to global uh, movement involve all people, not just religious people. Reach out. This is the miracle, how God is behind us. It's absolutely, you know, the God is talking. The daily life is amazing how, how they are. So it's, it's, a, it's a miracle. It's, you can really see that how God is walking behind us, each one of us. And then one more thing I, I mentioned is we know uh, True Father's uh, life course. He talked about it, and there are a lot of things that we experience with True Father, but True Mother's, uh, there are only a few things we know. Uh, this century, True Mother's memoir came up, True, true Mother's grandmother, True Mother's uh, mother. But actually, I, I think uh, in the future, the more and more we, we will know about True Mother's life course, uh, struggles. As a human being, she went through so many difficult things, but overcame. I'm sure we will learn it, and we expect that. So we are very grateful the point I want to make is very grateful to God, our heavenly parents. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you, Don uh, Kuahara, Mika's father. I am so grateful to you because you raised up your child so well. She's taking, taking care of the members very well. Wow. Seeing father, I can sing. Your daughter, how beautiful she is. Thank you so much, Don Kuahara. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kuahara. Uh, next, I'd like to invite up the King couple, John and Keiko King, to share with us their gratitude points this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Young. Whoa, King's couple. Mm -hmm. uh, King and Queen, and thank you. The queen will go first today. <laughs> uh, good morning, Dr. Young. Um, the, uh, we are the, the middle hands of uh, the room. The first, uh, we are so grateful to uh, the, the, uh, the middle hand. He gave the, uh, the, the uh, Sunday uh, service at the national uh, service in Canada. Mm. So the, uh, I'm very moved his deep hyojan uh, towards his parents. That really also they extended to the heavenly parents and true parents. Mm -hmm. I'm very very grateful. Uh, the, uh, we have such a uh, the, uh, the the leadership who has very deep uh, the hyojan in front of heavenly parents and true parents. Mm -hmm. And also the the I have uh, the, I have also the very grateful my ancestors. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the because I'm ancestors sacrifice uh, and I'm on here. Mm -hmm. I receive the blessing uh, from uh, the true parents. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the in historically many you know the the uh, maybe good couples, but uh, I could receive the blessing with my husband, and uh, uh, the uh, could together with the uh, the heavenly parents and true parents. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that was of course never happened in my you know the line. So mm -hmm. uh, in that sense, this is very grateful. Mm -hmm. And even though uh, the we uh, the hit the wall sometimes. But that was the uh, the ancestors couldn't overcome, uh, so that that's why the, through our relationship and then myself could uh, got a, uh, Milhan expressed that it's like a break the cycle, uh, the overcome because mm -hmm. of that we have the victorious true parents, mm 
mm. uh, the overcome everything carrying the whole human beings. Mm. The, the, how much you know, tough it is, only like you know, the carrying the, some difficulty from uh, you know, the, myself or uh, the uh, ancestors is tough, but the true parents carrying the whole you know, the burden of the, uh, the, the humanity. I'm very grateful. Then beyond that, you know, the uh, the heavenly parents is also the embracing the true parents. Wow. I'm very grateful that. Amsamida, thank you, Keiko Queen. Let's go to John King. <laughs> Good morning again. Thank you so much. A uh, few things. One, first of all, uh, Reverend Stevens Milhan said that at the subregion meeting recently, there's a lot of second gen. He was appreciating the second gen leadership, and I said. Yeah, you guys have a great leadership team. And he said, at the head table at the subregion meeting, all second gen, the leaders there. So it's really beautiful and really grateful for that. Uh, my gratitude point for today was uh, my really good friend, John and Helen Abelseth became grandparents again last night. Oh. Their daughter, Adiella, gave birth to a young boy, a little boy, and so happy for them. They have a beautiful family of three generations growing and growing. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, it's not really, I say, it's a really good point. I saw this beautiful movie yesterday called Penguin Bloom. Mm -hmm. This family had a lot of problems, of difficulties, and a small broken baby bird mm -hmm. God sent to them to heal them. The movie didn't point that out, but I could see this bird was sent by God. Mm -hmm. And a whole family could, all their relationships could get better and better. And even physically got yeah, much better. So I'm really grateful to God for that movie. You are yeah. such a lovely couple. And I am so glad that, you know, all Canadian now brothers and sisters joining the morning devotion. I have a longing heart to go to Canada to see each one of our members in person. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, John and Keiko, King and Queen. Kamsahamida. Thank you, John and Keiko. Now, brothers and sisters, let us prepare our hearts and minds to receive our heavenly inspiration today through our beloved Dr. Chung Shik Yong. Annyeonghaseyo. Good morning. Good morning. My dear brothers and sisters, clergy and ambassador for peace, annyeonghaseyo. Happy Parents Day. Wow. So please greet to your father and mother. If you don't have your father and mother, you need to greet to the, your spiritual parents or your father-in-law or mother-in-law. I'm so glad to hear in America, we have Parents Day. Parents Day. It is a really beautiful celebration. It is a really great opportunity to contact them and call them, say hello. We are children of God. Uh, yesterday I visited uh, uh, Subregion 1 Leaders Retreat. I was so happy to see my brothers and sisters in person. Uh, you know, they held this uh, uh, sub-region one leaders retreat at uh, East Garden. Uh, National leader Naokimi is uh, leading the all the meeting. And as we, especially Res Fred, he's a secretary general. Wow, this guy is uh, really doing excellent jobs, organizing this and that. Our race Fred is really, really can become really capable leader in the future. Now, just now Keiko and John also mentioned that many second generation leadership is coming up now. I'm so glad that our Joshua and Milhan and many, many second generation now is coming up to taking ownership. I'm so grateful to our second generation. I think sooner or later, I think, you know, when we have a right environment, then many, many second generation will come, not because of us. I think spiritual world influence them to come naturally. We need to create that kind of the environment of the heart. 
we need to cultivate that kind of environment in our movement and then spiritual world, you know, push them to come and join. We cannot do by humanist, human's power. There is a limitation to do something. We cannot do that by just only education, not just only pushing them. When we create the environment of true love, then spiritual world is very, very sensitive. And then without knowing, uh, without, how say, without noticing, spiritual world influence them and the spiritual world mobilize them. And then their heart and mind, they really automatically want to connect to the our move. We need to create that kind of the spiritual environment through the morning devotion as a father and mother, as a first generation, if we cultivate our heart all the time and then change our church atmosphere, we can change our family atmosphere, we can change our environment, then I am telling you, many good phenomena will occur everywhere. Yesterday I was very happy but I, I just only joined the last minute and just I gave only five minutes. I delivered a speech, but I'm so sorry for that. Next time I need to prepare more and then I, I, I'd like to deliver Father's word. Was very, very happy. I'm really, really happy. My, my hobby is to meet people. My hobby is to meet people. Well, because of the COVID-19 and, uh, you know, I could not really hug each one of them. I really want to see uh, more and more our beloved brothers and sisters. And today, uh, I'd like to talk about, again, that rain and cold wind give away to peace from our true mother's uh, memoir just now. You know, Don uh, Huahara talking about, uh, you know, through mother's uh, life course. So through, through mother's memoir, we learn so many things, how much our true mother gone through all kind of experience. You know, to prepare some word from mother's memoir, I do not know how many times I need to read, you know, many, many, many times. The more I study, the more I meditate about the mother's life course, it is really beautiful. It is really incredible and unimaginable. You know, as a woman, as a one lady, how come she going through that kind of the suffering and difficulties? Wow, really beautiful. Today, let's learn again our true mother's life course. Please. The people do not understand unification now, but if the 30 million people of Korea join together with the unification church, this nation and these people will not perish. Arriving here in December, 1971, my husband and I with our members invested all our strength to resurrect the founding spirit of America and awaken Americans to their God-given responsibilities. Early in 1974, President Nixon sent us an invitation to meet him in the White House. On the heels of our meeting with the president, we went out again, this time to speak in 32 cities completing our coverage of all 50 states, including Alaska and Hawaii. Wow, you're talking about including Alaska and Hawaii. Tomorrow I will go to Alaska to meet our young uh, second generations, those who are participating ocean workshop. Just now when we read here, True parents stood on the foundation of Korea and carried on even bigger responsibility 
and went out on the path of loving the world. You know, always what we can learn from true parents is that their vision and goal was always for the world and humanity. This is a really important point. So we cannot deny, you know, their position and their re- portion of responsibility. They came to the came to the world as the Messiah and Savior. The mission of the Messiah is always centering on and world and all mankind. Bible also very, very clearly mentioned. You know, in John chapter 3, 16, he says that because God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, the Messiah. So, Heavenly Honey, please read regarding this Bible verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen clearly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. Therefore, the ultimate goal of the Messiah is to save the world. If we love the Messiah, we must love the world that the Messiah loves. The Bible says that only when we love the world that the Messiah loves can we be saved and have eternal life. God did not send the Messiah only for one denomination. And it should be clearly understood that it was not sent only for one country. Only when we love the world can we be the light of the world like the Messiah. Father, keep on emphasizing this matter again and again and again and again. And, uh, you know, that's why the, the Messianic mission is not just only for individual or family or for the nation. The goal of the Messiah is to save the world. That's why God sent the Messiah to the world. So according to God's concept of the salvation is salvation of all mankind. If we clearly understand the goal of the Messiah, goal of the heavenly parents, no other way. We need to love the world. Therefore, we too must live with a vision for the world and humankind. Even if the work we do is less than that of true parents. You know, when I was young and just joined our movement, Father always talking about individual, family, you know, and tribe, and ethnic group, and then what the nation and war and cosmos. He always talking about, almost every summer talking about from individual level to cosmic level, <laughs> from someone over someone level to God's level, vertically A stage and horizontally A stage. 
I could not understand what he's talking about, talking about when I was young. And then I, I, uh, when I understand the father's word and father's vision, his vision is uh, for the sake of the world and for the sake of the humankind, you know, to become son of the Messiah, you know, to become filial sons and daughters of God and two parents. I need to have the same mindset, same concept. I need to love the world and humankind like our heavenly parents, true parents and love the world. For me, it was not easy to reach that level. But I continuously pray from the beginning about world and humankind, but I cannot feel, I do not know how to pray for the sake of the world and humankind. But one day, I understood and reached that level through my prayer. Wow. Completely different dimension. To be frank with you, even though my mission is in America and uh, you know Canada, my major concern is how to help the world, how to help all mankind. I really love the concept of the true parents. Love the world, love all mankind. For God so love the world, not just only nation. Bible said, for God so love the world, so love the all mankind that he gave his one only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Therefore, our focal point should be the world and all mankind. When we unite with the Messiah and true parents and loving the world and saving the old mankind, only through this kind of the you, this kind of way, we can gain eternal life. That's why truly we can understand one family under God. When we understand this Bible verse, John uh, chapter 3, verse 16 to 21, then we can overcome any nationalism. We can overcome any kind of national boundaries any thought. We can embrace all mankind because God so loved the world. That is the reason God sent the Messiah to the world. God really does not care your color. God does not care your national boundaries. God does not care what kind of religion do you have. So we common point unite unite with the Messiah, and they need to get the salvation through the blessing. It doesn't matter what kind of religion do you have. The common point is changing blood lineage. Therefore, someone you are believing in Islamism, and you need to be you know you know Islamic blessed family. You have you are Jewish. You have to be you know Jewish blessed family. You are Catholic, you have to be you know, Catholic blessed family. You are Buddhism, you have to be Buddhism blessed family. Common point is what? Blessed family. Blessed family, changing blood lineage. The, co the course of restoration is what? Does not care. National boundary what? Heavenly Father, main concern is what? How to restore blood lineage? Blood lineage. If you change blood lineage, become God's sons and daughters from slave to blood lineage. Therefore, Messiah's main, main job is what? Blessing. What does blessing mean? Blessing means changing blood lineage. Don't do it just by conditional. Everybody needs to go through the experience of rebirth, through the 43-day condition. 
need to have a 40 day separation and three day. Everybody go through that kind of the process of the blessing and then they can experience a substantial change in blood lineage, which is the which is the process of the rebirth. Don't make it anything by just only symbolic by condition. We need to give them to, uh, to experience of the rebirth through 43-day condition. I'm really so happy that our Dr. Rouse and or our, our ACLC and major leadership now understood about this point. What is the creator's gift given by heavenly parents to the parents? That is blessing. Blessing means salvation. How to save the people? Through blessing. Blessing means what? Changing blood lineage. That doesn't matter what kind of religion you have. We can embrace everybody in the name of the blessing. This is a really, really great point. And also the true powers when uh, based on Korea Foundation, uh, through parents now he go expanding his uh, you know providence everywhere. Just now I already mentioned if we live with a vision for world and humankind, we we'll, we will be able to fill our own nation and its people in our arms. Through parents who went to the United States, the center of the world mission, and launched a campaign to awaken the founding spirit of America. We need to know that America is the center of the world. The country and people that God has chosen early for the sake of the world. That I, since I came to America, I really, really realized that the importance of the American mission. When I was young, when I was in Asia, I did not know that much. I know America is very important, but since I came to America, I realized that, wow, America is the center of the world. If we change America, we can change the world. That's why our brothers and sisters in Canada, in, in America, your mission is very important, not just only for the sake of the America, we need to save all mankind through American providence. As the elder son nation, America should always think of other nations are younger siblings nations and be prepared to help at any time. Okay, next content, Heavenly Honey. In the midst of this, in Korea, we displayed the power of the victory over communism VOC movement at a rally of 1.2 million on Yoido rally in Seoul. This led to a nationwide movement aimed at the reunification of North and South Korea in the 1980s. The VOC teaching spread beyond Japan and Asia. One of its fruits appeared 20 years later in our meeting with Mikhail Gorbachev, then president of the Soviet Union. This opened the door to teach the young people of the former Soviet Union our God-centered worldview, the democratic spirit and ethical values which contributed to the reconciliation of East and West and the downfall of communism. Another fruit was our trip to North Korea in 1991 when we met North Korean leader Kim Il-sung. Our harrowing but thoroughly triumphant visit opened the way for dialogue between North and South Korea and prepared a foothold for our work there. Today, the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification serves in more than 190 nations. And this act is Activism for peace and true family life grew from the seeds of our missionaries' sacrificial love. The path of the last 60 years has flown straight to the target. 
filled with difficulties and obstacles together with joy and success. After True Father's Holy Ascension in 2012, I took upon myself a great responsibility. To experience true peace, we must first practice true love without expectation of reward. My husband and I walked this path and continuing on it, I prepared the Sunhuk Peace Prize as a gift for the world from Father Moon. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. True Mother said, now as we attend God as one parent, we are fulfilling the dream of true peace in which all of humankind become brothers and sisters. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called sons and daughters of heaven. In that sense, it cannot be denied that true parents are the sons and daughters of God who came to bring peace to the world. Exactly, they are focused on for establishing world peace. Today, Father's word, a person whom God can trust. Heavenly honey, please. What is it that you can achieve through giving a lot of thanks? The more grateful you are, the more God's love will be piled up. So when you go to spirit world, you will leave the world words of gratitude and go back to father with only love. And you will live in love for eternity. Imagine how grateful to God you would be while exalting him in that world. This is a dream. If someone encounters misfortune, God knows it in advance. When you carry out your worldwide mission in the situation you are in, if you suffer the most unfortunate circumstances, God cannot but remember you instantly. If you digest that difficulty with gratitude, God will say that you are trustworthy. If you go over that mountain, you will receive the best blessing. That is the principle. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. The more we give thanks to God, the more our love for God will accumulate. Therefore, my spiritual body grows whenever I am so grateful. There are many ways to grow my spiritual body, but we can say simply, centering on few points. You know, to grow my spiritual body first. When I eat the love of God through his word, one of the best way to, you know, grow up my spiritual body, you need to eat a lot of God's love. God's word is God's love. So, that's why you need to listen a lot of God's word. Secondly, you need, to, you need to read a lot of God's word. And thirdly, you need to practice a lot of God's word. Without eating God's word, which is God's love, it is impossible to grow my spiritual body. Very, very important. Therefore, where there is a chance to hear God's, God's word, you need to participate. No matter what, you need to participate in morning devotion without missing. If you have that kind of attitude, right attitude, always long for God's word. I'd like to hear more. There's a chance to hear God's word more, and I want to hear again and again and again. There's a chance to read God's word. I want to read again and again and again. Where there's a chance to practice God's word, I need to, no matter what, I will go and I'd like to practice. Through this kind of a mindset attitude, our spiritual body always can grow up. 
Secondly, when I live for the sake of others and move their hearts through living for the sake of others and then really give a big impact to the others, move by my heart. And then, you know, when I touch someone's heart and then vibration is coming from that person because he really moved by me and then vibration, the power of the vibration come to, come to my spirit and touch my spiritual body and then my spiritual body can go on. That's why without touching people's heart, not just only living, not just only living for the sake of others, touch people's heart. That is the best moment to grow my spiritual body. And then third point, when I live with gratitude in any situation, Father said, we are fallen people. Most of the fallen people just inheriting, inherit the blood lineage from their own ancestors. Now needs to change because there is no teacher, there is no principle, nobody guiding them. That's why they always just want to repeat and again and again their ancestors' a problem. When you fall down at some, some spot, then you will fall down same spot as well. That's why not easy to change. However, even though you inherit from your ancestors such DNA, however, when you live with a gratitude in any situation, even at the, at the time your ancestor complain and blame and criticize and could not overcome, just repeat the same as your ancestor. However, and then you overcome with gratitude in such a situation. Wow. And then God saying, you already changed your blood lineage. That's why Father talking about, I will leave behind the word of the gratitude to, to, to the world. And then I will return to my father with only love. I will return and live forever in love. Father said, when a person encounters misfortune, Sometimes a serious trial, accident, all kind of happening. God knows it in advance. How can, how can God know? Because your style, lifestyle, your character, your ancestors, situation, you are repeating the same problem. That's why God can, God can guess. If you go that way, some, sometimes, uh, some, some, someday will happen like that. God knows it in advance. And then, you know, God said that from the, uh, the Father said that from human's point of view, God is well, uh, well aware that it is difficult to get over such a misery. Such a misery. Everybody can fall down at the same spot like their own ancestors. The bigger the mission, the more difficult the situation. It is often difficult to overcome. That's why when God's children go through such misfortunes and trials, God, as a parent, is also nervous. And God cannot but remember you instantly. However, in this situation, if you digest that difficulty with gratitude, God will say that you are trustworthy. If you go over that mountain, you will receive the best blessing. That is the principle. Oh, this is really amazing guidance. Why we are lucky girls and boys? Do you know why? If we do not join our church, if we do not know divine principle, 
Maybe we repeat the same problem as ancestors. We can fall down at the same spot like our ancestors. However, we met God. We met through parents. We know the principle. We know that what, what is the indemnity cause. And God teaches us, true parents teach us how to overcome in detail. <laughs> That's why whenever we're facing some misfortune and trial, and then already prepare my heart how to overcome with gratitude rather than complaining. And then God said, wow, wow. You are trustworthy. On the that kind of situation, most of your ancestors complain and could not overcome. How come you overcame? You are different. You are children of God. You are children of true power. You are really blessed family. Wow, I love you. I want to kiss you. I want to hug you. God surely give you blessing. A person who God can trust, what kind of person can be trust? When you have gratitude, appreciation in any circumstances, in any situation, then God say that. You are trustworthy. I can trust you. That's why we need to really thank our heavenly parents and true parents. We need to thank our truth, which is a divine principle. Today, uh, you know, I'd like to show one video. Uh, I don't. I don't give you about youth ministry. So now our OG, please show the one of the beautiful uh, video. Uh, it is the, you know, last week I when I visited to the, um, you know, Georgia church and it was a really beautiful, uh, you know, activity and uh, Levi Dori uh, editing uh, that video with the, uh, you know, some our second generation. Uh, I'd like to show that video. Please, media team, show that video. You know how much I love the number three. We went on a three-day journey with God, and we walked with God the whole way. I am so excited about this program that we just finished. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Levi, Matthew Billups Doherty. They call me Pastor Levi. And we had the wonderful and glorious opportunity to host our leader, our continental director, our bishop, our, 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 our loving servant that have come here from all the way from Korea, sponsored by our dear loving mother of peace, Mother Moon, and his name is Dr. Chong Shik Yong. I'm so excited about him. We started this journey together at the Martin Luther King Memorial, where the, he and his lovely wife is laid to rest. At that beautiful pool, Dr. Yong grabbed our hands and he said, let's pray, let's pray that the Dr. Martin Luther King spirit can really go with us throughout this land, not just Georgia. And we united and we felt the presence of Jesus Christ. In that precious moment, we prayed. And then we left there filled with the Holy Spirit and we visited one of our great leaders, Bishop Shield, a mega pastor here in Georgia. And he lifted us up to another level where he talked about, we've got to work together as family, go to Korea, Japan, all over the world and sing God's praises. He wants with us to build an international 
choir of people singing and dancing for the glory of God. We can build the kingdom of heaven one person or one family or one church or one nation or one world at a time. And that's what this is all about. It depends on our ideas. Is it broad enough for God to work with us or are we too narrow? And I'm so grateful for that. And we left his office really elevated and we came back here on that Friday evening. That was a Friday, the first evening. That was that Friday evening. I had a wonderful banquet with our dear uh, Dr. Ross, Luan Ross, and hosted and with uh, uh, our brother here, Mark Abernathy. And we went to his church. Now, when we went to his church, I was not expecting this. There was nobody there but us. And we went into that church and again, our dear Dr. Young said, let's pray, grabbed our hands and began to pray. And as we prayed, the Holy Spirit came down. And I tell you, there were tears and, and just incredible, a uh, 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 sanctimonious moment in that. And God anointed his building, anointed him. And we will, we will work together as another organizational peer apart to this, uh, to this great movement. Thank you so much. The American Clergy Leadership Conference. Don't forget it. And we work with the American Clergy Leadership Conference and the Young uh, Christian Leadership Conference. Working with us together, we are now going to set this world on fire. The first day, that's the first day. The second day, as I told you, I love this number three. It's an excited. Now, we're in the second day. The second day, we came to the, uh, the Georgia True Family Center here. We had the program with the Women's Federation and the Young Ambassadors of Peace. And we also worked with um, uh, uh, all of the young people here. Music and excitement. I tell you, we had uh, brothers and sisters who got blessed, went through their 40-day program, and they were here. And out of all that was ha what that happened, the most important thing was Dr. Chung Sik Young's speech. It lit the place on fire. Now I know a lot of you out there know about Jesus, but when Dr. Young got through talking about Jesus, we all felt like all of a sudden we were born again. And understanding, he said this one thing, and I never will forget it. It's all right to love Jesus. It's all right that Jesus love us. But can we love like Jesus loved to the point where we're willing to give our life? And that hit me strongly and everybody else too. It was a powerful moment because whatever you do, Whatever you do in the name of Jesus, you can do this in the name of Jesus, in the name of, but if you're not doing as Jesus did, loving as Jesus loved, giving that all to build the kingdom of heaven on earth. And he did the first sermon that Jesus gave was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I also want to tell you about Naomi King, uh, Martin Luther King's sister-in-law came here, she's doing an incredible continuous work in this way. When we prayed and she came and she w uh, stayed with us all day, it was just a wonderful thing. Also, I wanna talk about uh, uh, Dr. Luan Ross and his lovely wife, Maria. And, and the work that they're doing in the American Clergy Leadership Conference is incredible, along with Joshua Holmes, young man who gave his life to Christ, gave, and, and, and is totally dedicated and doing this work with the YCLC. Senator Danzella James is one of a remarkable political person that just is filled with the Holy Spirit. Also sponsored the YCLC, the, uh, LC. They, they uh, worked together with her group called the Young Ambassadors of Peace. That is what is going on in our life. That was the second day. Now, the third day, was Sunday morning. Everybody would get excited about Sunday morning. And we were excited more about Sunday morning because again, Dr. Young was going to give the message. And did he ever. He gave the message and, and, and what he talked about was how important it is to love. Again, how important it is to love. We all say, oh, I love this and I love that. But the love that we had, and he stopped the whole service and said, okay, now get up, get up out of your chairs, get up out of your seats, go and find somebody and hug them and love them. And, it, and the place just went crazy. And so the, that's my point. I want you to understand this. The, this was our anniversary. 
we thought, our anniversary. But in reality, God took over. God took over. Dr. T.L. Barrett came all the way from Chicago. Michael Jenkins came. And, and we were working together with this program here. And who would have ever thought that we came here to work on the, uh, uh, the, the center that we're building out there as our anniversary. And God just blessed us enormously. You cannot believe how the blessing of God took. I want to thank our district pastor, Reverend Luke Haguchi, who is really behind the scenes doing all this incredible work. Him and his wife came in. They were a, a blessing of labor, serving and giving the whole three days. You cannot believe the work they did. And it has inspired me so much to work with him. And our sub-regional leader, Reverend Ernest Patton and his wife Keiko Patton. They both came. Keiko Patton worked with serving the food. She's a professional caterer and she did, just served us superbly. Food was out of this world. All the whole three days, we just feasted on her incredible work. Also, I want to remind you of our legend in his own time, Reverend Dr. Young Wee Kim. He is not feeling well but his wife came in his stead. Mrs. Kim came with just a heart of love and glowing with, with a compassion for the world. Thank, I want to thank her for coming. With Mrs. Kim, she also brought with her her grandchildren and they offered flowers in behalf of their family to young, Dr. Young. And now we have a new mission. Our mission is to bring 40 pastors together with the interest and love of how we can bless this world. 40 days of sanctification, purification, and blessing, and we can move the world. The revelation we received while we were in this incredible meeting that we have to have 40 pastors in Georgia those 40 pastors will pull down the Holy Spirit and we can then move throughout this nation. That blessing will be the number one blessing in all of America. My brothers and sisters, please pray for us. We're not begging you to pray. I'm asking you to pray with us. We have a enormous task, an incredible task. And God is going to be with us, of course, but we have to do our best and work as hard as we possibly can. Thank you so much for sharing this moment with us. And God bless. Ah, beautiful. Thank you, everyone. Kamsahamida. Thank you very much, Dr. Young. And thank you for showing that video. It's kind of like an advertisement. And I hope we don't all have to do it when you come visit. <laughs> Okay, now, brothers and sisters, let us take this time to reflect on what we gained from today's morning devotion. If you're by yourself, please reflect on what you gained, and we'll come back here and share with one another. So we'll see you all in a few minutes.
<clears throat> Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful, heartfelt sharing with each other. Uh, at this point, I'd like to call on Dr. Mwanda. Dr. Mwanda, we met yesterday. It's a reunion today. Dr. Mwanda, if you could please share your reflection. Thank you very much. And good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank you very much for the morning devotion. And thank you, Dr. Young, for- uh, Thank you, Dr. Buanda. Happy to see you. Much. Happy to see you too. Yeah, the morning devotion is like uh, a spiritual wind that is blowing. Mm. And uh, the more we do it, believe me, America will be in fire, spiritual fire. <laughs> a change will come. Now for today, I'm moved with uh, the sharing how to gain trust to God. Mm, mm -hmm. yeah. mm. And as we share in our group, it is uh, when uh, you digest difficulty with gratitude. Mm. So it means uh, even if sometimes you are facing very difficult situation, mm. but if you have gratitude, mm. then God is gonna say to you, you know what, you win that victory. I mm. can trust you. Mm. Yeah, that's one point that really moved my heart also. Wow. And let me share also the experience of uh, your, your visit in Atlanta. It was really powerful. Yeah, right. With your minister. Yeah. Especially as uh, Reverend Levi was sharing, that you say it's okay for, Jesus to came and Jesus came and then he gave his life for us and we are saved. But the challenge now for us is, uh, are you able to also give your life to save others? Uh, so that's a real challenge yeah. for all of us. Yeah. yeah. And then also it brings the understanding of the sacrifice of Jesus mm. to the level. Yeah. Uh, because in real life, if someone sacrifices his life for you, you will always feel indebted in relationship to that person. Yeah. Now, if that person is not there, the only way you feel at ease is if you too can dedicate your life for others, so you follow the same model. Mm. And so Jesus has raised us to that awareness so that you can be able to connect with God. But the general trend, sometimes you just close the end. So you know what, I'm saved because Jesus gave his life for me. Mm. Okay, you are saved, Jesus gives you life. Okay, but you too, you need to do the same. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. That's the point, yes, Dr. Mwanda, right. Jesus save us, that's why we need to save the people. Save right. that Jesus. Yes, yeah. So that's why, what else can we do? Is just to live for the sake of others. Mm. To be there for others and then to promote mm. this heart of God that two parents have shown to us. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's why even when father is gone, true mother cannot sit down. Yeah. She has to stand up because she has to be there for the sake of others. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so, thank you, Dr. Mwanda. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mwanda. Very powerful. All right, next, I'd like to invite up Patrick Stinnard, Patrick Stinnard, uh, to share with us his reflection point this morning. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, I was just uh, sharing that. Uh, I was grateful to uh, go to the Subregion One Leaders Retreat um, and just, you know, do what I can to help. Um, uh, I had a good experience at Camp Chahakwa, um, and uh, I felt like it was good to come back to, like, more connect with um, the people near where I live. Um, uh, I was grateful to shake Dr. Yang's hand. I saw him come out of his car, and <laughs> I got to uh, meet Dr. Young, um, and um, and I feel I feel like Dr. Young really cares about me, um, and you know that's inspiring for me. It, it I I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't be on my current path if it wasn't for Dr. Young because Dr. Young gives me a schedule. I wake up in the morning, I do morning devotion. You know, I I try to live my life for God now, um, and it's uh, it's. You know, it's it's like if, if it wasn't for Dr. Young, what would I be doing? I'd probably be working, you know, doing something boring and, you know, not really living how I want to be living. And uh, and, I, and I'm taking a risk in life by like 
trying to change my life and like following, like following, uh, following the path of like God, but like, um, it's, it's, it's leading me to like somewhere, somewhere where I've never been before. And it's, it's kind of like interesting. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like, it's different and new and it's exciting for me. So, um, I'm just grateful for that. And thank you, Dr. Yang. Um, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Stinad, Patrick. I think you have to be Patrick person. Patriot. Patriot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Your name is a good name to love your nation, love the world. 감사합니다. Thank you. 감사합니다. Thank you very much, Patrick. And thank you for your willingness to help out at the leadership retreat. And now, brothers and sisters, if you're feeling inspired today, please invite people to join in, in this morning devotion experience. One other thing for people watching on Facebook and YouTube is if you're in the Zoom, you can always read the slides. You don't have to shift between where the slide is and what's not being shown. You have full autonomy. So if you'd like to join, go to edu.familyfed.org and click the link at the bottom to join in in the Zoom morning devotion experience. And for everyone who's feeling especially inspired, there's going to be a link in the chat for you to donate to support morning devotion ministry. Please give joyfully if you're feeling inspired. And now it's my pleasure to invite up for our musical offering today, Jackson and Kyoko Bowman. Hi, good morning. Uh, I have been wanted to sing a song uh, for a long time. Wow. I decided today, and then my husband want to join us. Wow, so, beautiful. I'm so, already excited. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and also, I want to sing for Japanese brothers and sisters as well today. One, two, three. Nearer, my God, to Thee. Nearer to thee, even though it be a cross that raiseth me, still all my song shall be nearer, my God, to thee. Nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer to Thee. To Your immortal name, Jika no more
so much for that that was so beautiful and uh yeah currently carp new jersey is in uh is in a retreat in pennsylvania so i'd like to call on one of them to offer a closing prayer oh uh please join me in prayer dear heavenly parents to your parents um good morning thank you so much for this um session of morning devotion where we're all be uh, we're all able to be here on the Zoom call or watching um, from the live streaming. Thank you so much um, for this opportunity for another day to be able to start off with um, listening to Dr. Yang's words and being inspired um, by a principle and um, words and yeah practices that we can apply to our everyday lives. God, um, we're so grateful to be able to have. Um, these words with us to start off our day to be able to practice not only throughout the day but throughout the week throughout the month and for the rest of our lives god thank you so much for um every single person who was able to make it here to be able to listen um to our beloved dr young um and i'm so grateful that um we're also able to um become friends with so many other um Christian church leaders through our ACLC. I was very inspired by the video from um, Pastor Levi. But yes, and I'm sure that every, a lot of other people were too. So hopefully that we could take this information um, that we learned today. And we, not only can we apply it, but we can also use it so that we, could be, we can become examples to people around us, not just Christian leaders and other church leaders, but also um, from other people who um, need guidance um and so i hope that we can be um a light in a lot of other people's lives and not just in our own church communities but outside of our church communities as well and yes thank you so much um i'm very grateful to be able to listen to dr young's words today and yes hopefully we can be inspired every day by these words and by um other words from dr young to be able to grow ourselves into even more mature people and to be um, a vessel for God to use. Thank you so much. For everything I pray in my name, I'm Anthony, a second generation member of the blessed family, Adju. Wow, uh, thank you, thank you, our come members in New Jersey. Kamsamida. Have a nice day. Thank you, Amanda, for such a prayer. And hope you guys have fun at the retreat. And for everyone else, thank you so much for joining Morning Devotion today. Have a wonderful Sunday, and we'll see you all bright and early tomorrow at 6 a.m. Eastern. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Happy Sunday.